welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to cover a technique for creating a typographic portrait. This approach is going to be similar to some of a few other videos that I've posted, but it's going to bring together some elements of masking as well as some displacement. And to start off, uh, the first thing we're going to do is generate a word cloud to use for our mask. So there are a number of different word cloud generators that you can use. For this example, I'm just going to use the one provided by wordclouds.com. Their tool is pretty good. Um, I like the level of control that it has, um, and there's a wide variety of fonts. So I'll just go real quickly over what I did uh, setting-wise to generate the text that I'm going to use. So. Starting at their website, the first thing I changed is the font to paddock, is maybe how you say that. Then I wanted the color just to be black and white because that'll be the easiest to use for our mask. So background's already black, so then to restrict the text to be just white, I can just click on all these little trash can guys except for the white one and hit apply. So now I've got my font, I've got my black and white, and I'm going to change the shape to be more square, although I think it's going to end up being circle-ish anyway. And then I also, just for the sake of cleanness in how the text is arranged, I'm going to change the direction to be just horizontal and vertical. So there we have it, and it's just the lorem ipsum text. Uh, so now that this has been generated, I can simply do copy image and then bring that into PaintShop Pro. So now in PaintShop Pro, I can right click in open space and say paste as new image, and now my word cloud is available as a separate image. So now let's bring in our portrait image, which we're going to use to overlay the text on top of. And essentially at this stage, we're going to be using the text to create a mask, but we wanna make sure that it's arranged at least appropriately within the right space, because ultimately we're going to apply a displacement to that text and we need it to line up with the portrait image for it to all work out. So now I can take my text image and just do a copy and then on top of the face image, just do a paste as new layer. So we can see that it kind of lines up pretty well already, but we could probably make it a little bit bigger. So now I want to create some duplicates of the text and kind of rearrange it so that it's kind of overlapping itself. But I don't want the text to all kind of blend in with itself so it just looks like a... a you know, incomprehensible shape of text that's just unreadable. Really, what I want to do is still create some separation. So the way to do that is I want to create a few layers where I can use one as the text and one as a shadow behind it, and then start to kind of move that around and place it. One way you can do this is by using layer styles. Um, however, when I was doing my testing and trying to use the drop shadow, it just wasn't prominent enough to create the effect that I was looking for and copying it in new layers just didn't have the effect. So the way I'm going to do it instead that seemed to work out a little bit better in my opinion was to create new layers and then create a selection from that for a black and a white layer. So here is a more manual way of creating shadow from a selection. So. The first thing I'm going to do, I'll hide this just to make what I'm doing a little bit more focused. I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to fill that layer completely with the flood fill tool and make that black. Then I'm going to create another new layer, but instead of black, I'm going to fill this one with white. So now I have two layers. I have what will be the text and what will be the shadow. And then I can use, by hiding both of these, I can use this text as my reference. So if I click the magic wand, set the tolerance pretty low, um, turn off contiguous. Actually, I'll probably set the tolerance to zero completely. And then just click anywhere in the black. And what we'll see if we zoom in is it pretty much is kind of wrapping around everything, including the spaces inside the letters. 
And now what I can do is with that selection still preserved, I can click on my white layer and then hit delete. And then I can also click on my black layer and click delete. And what I'm left with then is a set of text on each of those layers that is both white and black. So then what you'll see if we zoom in here is that text is there. Actually, I'll turn the background on to make it more clear. The text is there, but if I were to hide the white, then you'll see the black is right underneath. So then what this will allow me to do now is if I take that black layer, and actually before I do this step, I'll probably get rid of some of that extra white and black that's hanging out underneath. Just by creating a box selection and then hitting delete and another box selection and hitting delete. And for the sake of consistency, I'll do the same for the white layer, actually. All right, so now we just have our white text and we have our black text underneath. But now with the black text layer selected, I can say adjust blur, Gaussian blur. And then at this stage, I can get very good control of exactly how much shadow is going to be created by this underlying layer. So we can see it's pretty good. You know, it really makes the text stand out. And so then here, hereafter, if I want to move this around, even if I'm overlaying other white text, it'll still have that separation. So I'll hit OK. So then now what I want to do is just merge the shadow and the white text into a single layer. So what I can do is now that I've made everything else invisible except for the white text and the black shadow layer is I can say merge visible. And now I have my text layer that I can duplicate and move around or rotate and then just create that sort of overlap now while still maintaining discernible text. So then if we turn on like the original background image, for example, now we can kind of see how it's a little bit busier in places perhaps where we want it to be. And if there's some extra adjustment that you want to do, um, you know, just tweak it, get it to exactly where you want the overlap to be. So next what we want to do is create a mask with all of that text that we just created. Um, but the way a mask works is we want to be able to have the white areas represent everything that's showing through and then anything dark is going to be blocked. And so right now what we have is the white with a little bit of shadow, but to create a true mask with this, we're going to have to have an actual black fill behind it. So I'm going to add a new layer, fill it with black. So now we have a nice black and white image that we can use for our mask. Right now, everything is hidden except for all the layers that represent the text and the black background. So now what I can do is I can say merge visible to new layer. And so now I have an image that very much is the perfect setup to become a mask. And I can say, from image, create a new mask in this mask layer. And then I want to say from source luminance and hit OK. So then now what I have, once again, you'll see is it looks almost similar to what I had before, where it's just the text and almost like no shadow, really. but. Now if I were to duplicate our background image and drag it into the region that is being masked, then what we see is that image starts to come through. So now to be able to see the effect of that on top of what was similar to what its original background was, we can turn the black layer on again. So now we can really start to see the effect of the text really just bringing some of the face forward in that sort of dramatic contrast. Now on my screen, it looks a little bit 
um, kind of, you know, it looks a little bit decontrasted in terms of what the original image was um, by comparison to the really dark background. So what I'm going to do is just add a layer adjustment layer with levels and I'm just going to darken the uh, face a little bit just so that it blends in with the background a little bit more. And this can be very simply done by just moving the slider on the left a little bit to the right. And we'll see how it really then just gets rid of that extra haloing that's caused by the difference in luminance of the original image. So now it's looking pretty good. Um, there's a few other things that I'd like to do. I think what would give it a little bit more of convincing effect of the text on the face is if we added a measure of displacement to it. So to apply a displacement effect, there's at least two things that you need. You need the layer that you want to displace or have the distortion effect applied be a single layer, it can't be a group, and you have to have a unaltered reference image. And in this case, I want the image of the face to be my reference image. So what I'll need to do is make a copy of the image that I'm working on that's just the face, paste it as a separate image in the workspace, then, since I want to use my text group, you know, the group that has the mask and the text and the face, as the layer that's going to be distorted, I need to merge that group into a single layer and then apply the dis effects, distortion effects, and displacement map. And so now it's looking for a reference. And for this to work, I have to have my original. So now here's my image three, which I had made a copy of, which was the original image. And the uh, what I've mentioned in other videos and whatnot of, of how to best use this, the two knobs that I work with, given all of the rest is kind of left the same, is that this dial really represents the angle at which light is shining. And so, in this case, since it seems like the light is hitting the individual at sort of an angle, you know, like you can see sort of the, the shadow on the nose really gives you an indication of what that angle is. That's how I decide um, where how to turn this dial. And then the strength just gives you, you know, how much deformation is actually going to be applied. And in this case, I think less is more. And you'll want to play with that number till it kind of ends up where you like it. I'm feeling kind of okay with roughly eight, so I'm going to hit okay. And then one final aspect, which is just a personal preference for me, is um, I, I kind of don't like messing with eyes. I feel like eyes are kind of like a very important focal point in a, in a portrait image. So in most cases where I'm doing work like this, I try to preserve the eye and have like the text and all that stuff not affect it. So the, the simplest way in this case that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take our original image and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to move it all the way to the top, but still under level so that it has the same contrast as the rest of the image. And then what I'm going to do is isolate just the eye. And then I'm going to take that selection and invert it and delete everything. So then we have basically almost, you know, everything around it, but the eye is left untouched. And then I can take the normal eraser, bring it down a little bit, bring the hardness down a little bit, bring it down a lot. And then just around the areas around the eye, I can erase just to bring all that text back, except for in the areas where I don't want the text to affect. And then that way, just personally, I feel like that still gives you that intense sort of focal point of the eyeball on the subject. And that's it. So well, there were a lot of temporary layers that were created in the process of trying to ultimately get to this final image. So I've kind of just removed all of those for the sake of clarifying explanation that by the end of the final image, really all that was needed is the levels adjustment layer, the layer that has the eyeball that's unaffected by the text, the text image, and then a black background. 
And one final comment I'll make just about this specific image and choosing the background color that since this image was dark, um, black worked out because it kind of hot, it hid all of the extra, you know, whatever things might be there around the edges and also either creates a sense of, you know, seeing through the face in the areas that it's black or at least a darkness that kind of matches the environment. If you have a very different image that doesn't have a black sort of feel and background and natural darkness to it, you may need to use either a different background or a different color. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, as always, if you have any questions or you'd like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. And if you would like notifications of updated content, feel free to subscribe. And also, I've recently set up a Patreon account for MakeShot Pro. So if you're interested in supporting what I do and the channel, feel free to check that out as well. And I'll see you guys next time.